so in the last we will be discussing about how to manage the fiber balance so in the beginning of uh, this protocol the diet protocol that we were discussing we were talking about how to manage the fiber content high fiber diet okay foods which are high in fiber like fruits and vegetables whole grains can help prevent constipation okay they are going to add bulk some insoluble fiber is going to add bulk into your stools which makes the peristaltic movement of the intestine much more easier and it will help the movement in your intestines so that you do not have constipation however if you do experience bloating from increased fiber try focusing solely on soluble fibers okay soluble fiber that is found in fruits and vegetable instead of grains okay low fiber diet can help a small group of people those are suffering from severe irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel syndrome see increasing your fiber can worsen the symptom because you can get a lot of gas or uh, you know uh, because of diarrhea the fiber is not going to help if you are suffering from chronic diarrhea so before completely eliminating fiber from your diet concentrate on sources of soluble fiber found in produce items such as apples berries carrots and oatmeal okay so even though apple is a high food map over here but still it can be considered if taken without the skin if it is easily accepted by your body and does not cause any sorts of bloating or does not worsen your symptoms soluble fiber dissolves in water okay and instead of adding extra bulk associated with insoluble fiber so soluble fibers that we are going to get from chia seed or psyllium husk these are also a good source of adding uh, bulk into our body which is going to help in both diarrhea as well as constipation so this is how we manage fiber we either go for a high fiber diet if it benefits us or else we are going to reduce the amount of fiber and add only soluble fiber into our diet so this is how we are going to manage the fiber so welcome back guys we are talking about ulcerative colitis rectal ulcers and irritable bowel disease or inflammatory bowel diseases this is going to be the last video in this series i hope that you have watched all the previous videos that we have made on this topic if you haven't then directly watching this video is not going to be helpful or fruitful for you it is better that you start with the other videos on my channel first build up your knowledge and let's uh, understand what we are talking about and only then you will have a proper benefit from this particular video so previously we have discussed a lot of things such as fiber such as keeping yourself hydrated uh, such as not straining during the passing of uh, stools also we have discussed many food products that are low in food maps uh, food maps which we have to add in our diet and also the high food map fo uh, foods that we have to avoid from our diet now coming to the next part of our uh, dietary management protocols we are going to discuss a particular type of diets which have shown beneficial results in some patients or we can say many people but sometimes these do not affect to a small group of people but still they are worth a try for everyone so that we can speed up the recovery process so first is trying the gluten free diet so gluten is a protein that is found in wheat and some other grains okay this protein can damage the intestine so a person that is suffering from ibs ulcerative colitis or rectal ulcer has already uh, some damage he already he or she has some damage in their intestine so consuming regular wheat or wheat products or gluten cereals is going to further damage their intestine so they may not have a celiac disease they may not be gluten intolerant forever but at the moment at the pro problem what they are facing of uh, the problem of ulcerative colitis the gluten intake is not letting their body heal faster the amount of recovery that they are having with a good diet and medication is being down regulated by the consumption of gluten foods so to boost our recovery we'll have to stop consuming the gluten okay which Uh, further damages are intestines okay so going gluten free can help most people recover faster but people who are suffering from ibs 
definitely should avoid gluten for a time period of 8 to 6 sorry for a time period of 8 to 12 weeks gluten free diet may reduce symptoms so eliminate barley rice and wheat from your diet and see if the gi problems improve okay the second type of diet that we can try which is actually not advisable in india because we don't have that quality of non-veg food available and number two uh, in india severe ulcerative colitis where we have to totally eliminate all sort of fiber uh, is not much needed but this diet carmine carnivore diet in a very exceptional way is very beneficial to some people in the western nations or in the european nations they have seen remarkable improvement when they quit all types of vegetables fruits pulses as well as whole grains so eliminating the fiber totally from their diet actually helps them with symptoms and non-vegetarian food along with fatty cuts and saturated fats is a very good source of eliminating majority of the malnutrient or subclinical deficiencies from their body so again in Indian environment, carnivore diet is a very tough diet to do because we do not have much options. But if your inflammatory disease has reached up to a state where nothing else has worked for you, you may give it a shot. The third type of diet that I am going to discuss with you guys is bone broth diet. You can do a solely bone broth diet or you can incorporate bone broths along with your other low food map diet options. So these bone broths are basically soups of bones. So those bones can come from chicken, those bones can come from fish or goat or lamb or any other animal that is being consumed in your area, in your respective country. So all we have to do is take their bones and boil them in water for uh, a so and so length of time. So let it be 60 to 90 minutes of uh, simmering in the low heat. And then we are going to drink that soup which has a lot of amino acids and collagen collagen is very important for your body to repair okay as well as these bone broth diets are very helpful in autoimmune conditions so if the ibs is happening due to genetical factors or autoimmune factors these bone broths are going to drastically help the person these bone broths can also be helpful in other autoimmune diseases but we will talk about them separately now coming towards the ending of a presentation i would like to discuss some supplements with you so at first probiotic supplement is uh, a very important tool so that due to constant consumption of steroids antibiotics and having an issues like chronic diarrhea there is a very high chance that the gut microbial flora will be totally disturbed and it has to be replenished as soon as possible so that our path to recovery may begin so a three times a day dose of a probiotic supplement or including probiotic foods that are low in food maps is going to help you a lot to recover from subclinical or clinical level of deficiencies we'll also have to consume multivitamins in liquid form or in a tablet form or we can also get a iv form also vitamin d is one of the very potent vitamin which can increase our immunity decrease our stress levels and also help us with pain and inflammation so a weekly dose of vitamin d is also must Omega-3s are also proven to decrease pain and inflammation in our body and will also help our body recover faster. Due to chronic diarrhea, there is a chance of bone loss or osteoporosis or softening of bones because we are not able to uh, digest or absorb the nutrients that is available in our food that we are eating. So calcium supplementation along with vitamin D are very important. Zinc is an, another very important um, mineral for our body to increase the immunity, to reduce the inflammation as well as to start our body coming into track and gaining the health that we once used to have. So zinc is also a very important part. It will also be covered in multi-mineral tablets and you can take it in extra form also. It will help in the recovery of our body. 
iron folic acid and vitamin b12 are very important with uh, the vision of a person that is losing blood in the stools or which a person who is having active ulceration or active bleed from ulcers uh, it is very important for us to recover our iron and vitamin b and folic acid levels so that we may avoid issues like anemia so these are the list of supplements that i would recommend to a ulcerative colitis or a rectal ulcer patient last at last we reach at our menu plan the menu plan is again consolidated till now we have talked about rectal ulcers and ulcerative colitis in a side by side form in a consolidated form because both of the topics are very close to each other the menu plan is also given in the same way so there are going to be some foods that are helpful in person suffering from constipation like aloe vera juice so the juice can include aloe vera or it may not include aloe vera depending upon that aloe vera is actually a laxative that means it helps relieve constipation symptoms so a person suffering from diarrhea wouldn't consume aloe vera that is understood so aloe vera will be consumed for the person will be taken uh, by, uh, by the person who is suffering from chronic constipation okay if you are not suffering from constipation then you can have the juice or the bone broth without the aloe vera wheat grass juice is also another very powerful antioxidant rich food antioxidant rich compound which helps our body in dealing with gut inflammation wheat grass juice can do magic for your body so please include fresh wheat grass juice or powdered wheat grass juice in your diet bone broth is also another option that we have in the breakfast we can have a bowl of curd that is probiotic a psyllium husk that is Uh, soluble fiber it is going to help both the people suffering from constipation as well as diarrhea soluble fiber helps both type of symptoms such as uh, both type of symptoms including diarrhea as well as constipation so it can be taken regularly there are no such side effects of uh, soluble fibers okay and it is going to help in both extremities of cases along with some low food map vegetables so that they the high fiber or the high sugar content the insoluble fiber or the sugar content does not harm our gut we can have some smoothies we can include coconut water into our diet to so replenish our electrolytes we can have another low food map vegetable in combination with that in the lunch we can have some gluten free bread or roti and along with that some lentils and low food map vegetables in the evening we can either go for some salad with egg whites or some chicken or fish bone broth pre dinner will be some low food map fruits dinner will be either porridge uh, made from quinoa with vegetables some lean chicken fish or eggs in the post dinner we can have lactose free milk or soy milk so i am going to once again clear up all these markings so that you can take a screenshot of it this is a standard menu plan that can be used for people suffering from rectal ulcers or irritable bowel syndrome ulcerative ulcerative colitis if you feel like having uh, to make a customized special diet chart for yourself if you are suffering from such problems or someone you know that has been suffering from these problems then you can contact me Uh, i am your very own nutritionist kavaldeep singh ochla from erudite nutrition this whole presentation has been brought to you by me in a good faith that i may be able to help majority of the people suffering from this disease any question yes i know this presentation was very long the topic was very diverse it had many ups and downs and different theories but any question related to your problem you guys can always contact me uh, on my facebook on my instagram or on my youtube channel and uh, i'll try my best to solve your queries thank you for your time your patience and your attention i really appreciate and thank you guys for keeping in touch and watching these videos till end i hope that you have gained a lot of knowledge about these problems if you are suffering from one it is very essential for you to get the knowledge about your problem yourself see i have the whole knowledge it doesn't give you any benefit that is why i'm sharing this information with you through my channel thanks a lot i know the topics were interlinked the topics were confusing the dietary protocols were lengthy and confusing as well 
if you do have any doubts go back watch it again you also received a diet chart after this at the end of this video so if you think that you need a more customized more flexible that diet chart that suits your particular needs you can always contact me on Aerodyne Nutrition via YouTube or Instagram or Facebook that is why I urge you to follow me and support me on, on all these platforms do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon you can also follow me on Facebook as well as on Instagram all these videos are being posted to all three platforms so that you do not miss any information that can drastically help you improve your health so now that we have discussed about all the GI related ulcers it is time to sum up this entire playlist I will be seeing you guys in the next video series when we, when we will be starting a new topic a new disease and again the whole disease will be broken down easy to understand videos and presentations and then we will also discuss it so I will keep bringing on great informational content for you guys so that you can take better care of your health so signing off right now your nutritionist on the go couple these things you guys stay safe stay healthy see you guys next time until then take care of yourself